This is the Enrichment Sports Source with your host, John Pennington. Good Sunday morning and welcome into the Enrichment Sports Source. We know it's cold outside, so bundle up and sit there and enjoy today's show. Even as we talk about yesterday's Florida debacle, uh, Tennessee shot, wound up shooting 26%. Oddly enough, that was only after they finished kind of hot. They were at 20% at one point in the second half. Uh, not a great day for the Vols. We'll discuss. We'll look at what that means big picture-wise. Talk about an interesting comment from Jarnell Stokes. What does it mean for zone defenses against Tennessee moving forward? Uh, we'll also cover some UT recruiting. Uh, can't do a show without the latest Bruce Pearl rumor. So a packed <laughs> house today on the show. Starts, as always, with our first segment brought to you by our friends at Enrichment Federal Credit Union. EnrichmentFCU.org is their website. Do you want to stay connected to your money at all times 24-7? Then you need the new mobile app from Enrichment. Get real-time balances and updated transaction information around the clock. You can even apply for a car loan while sitting and filling out paperwork at your dealer. The new Enrichment Federal Credit Union mobile app available for both iPhone and Android users. Enrichment Federal Credit Union. All right. Welcome into our panel. We have right over here from the sports animal, Jimmy Himes. We have former uh, player for Bruce Pearl, former uh, staff member under Bruce Pearl and Conzo Martin. We have Mark Pankratz. Mark, thank you. Don DeVoe, winner of 500 basketball games. That's just a phenomenal stat. Uh, it would take someone, you know, if you win 20 games a year, it'd take a long time. <laughs> then we have Chuck Cavalaris right over there, uh, media mogul in town, <laughs> Golf News of Tennessee, among many other spots. Thanks to everyone. Um, we start with the ugly loss yesterday. Obviously, it wasn't pretty. It was ugly. It was horrible. But Florida has won 26 in a row at home. They're number six in the nation. They've won 11 straight games overall. Tennessee will be playing them again in a couple of weeks at home. So as ugly as that looked, was it as bad a loss as it looked? We'll start on the right side. Jimmy. Well, based on you telling me that the RPI went up after the game, maybe it wasn't as bad a <laughs> loss. Depending, uh, on, depending on the, it, the RPI system it, you use, yes. It could deflate your confidence a little bit the way they played uh, but I'm also reminded that last year Tennessee went to Kentucky and got beaten and came back and beat Kentucky at home by 30. Now that was a Kentucky team that was I think pretty much fresh off not having Nerlens Noel mm -hmm. so they were a little bit different from that team but in basketball it can be so up and down uh, they Tennessee can bounce back they have enough veteran players to where they could bounce back I would just be a little bit worried about their psyche coming back after just getting blown out like that. Chuck, we talked last week um, about the games. We put them on the board, games that Tennessee could afford to lose. This was one that technically they could afford to lose. And, yes, it did. their RPI did jump a little bit by going on the road and playing a better team. But that is also going to be on the, on the schedule sheet that the NCAA selection right, committee has. Right. They're going to be able to see that, that score, which was not a pretty score. Your thoughts on the Tennessee-Florida game, how big of a problem was it? Oh, well, I mean, what happened forward? after Tennessee had scored 15 points? I mean, they just did nothing. The crowd impacted them. The Florida press impacted them. Uh, the press, Tennessee didn't have an answer for that. Other coaches, obviously, are going to pick up on that, and that, to me, is the blueprint to beat Tennessee, especially on the road. You, you don't let McCray, you know, you make him take off-balance shots. You let him force shots, and Stokes is going to get his, and you expose the Tennessee guard. So that's as, as much as the psyche, to me, there is a very clear blueprint on what Tennessee is going to have to overcome on the road. What did you think of the guard play, Don? Well, it was atrocious. You know, this was uh, unfortunate. You know, but, you know, this game, as I've often said, you know, belongs to guards. You know, guards controlled it with the three-point line, their penetration with the new rules and, you know, not being able to really play great defense and not putting your hands on anybody. Guards really controlled the game. And yesterday, you know, our guards just, just did so many poor things. You know, they picked up the ball in the backcourt. I'm, I'm talking about very experienced guards now. Our guards picked up the ball. They threw the ball into trapping areas. We didn't have any pressure releases from our four man. You know, when they put four men at Florida in our backcourt and start double teaming, there's openings down mm -hmm. the floor. We have a numerical advantage beyond midcourt, and we have to have the pressure release where our four man or five man flashes to the ball. We hit them, and now we got a we got a two on one going to the basket. We didn't do that until there was well until the game was a route. So our guards really let us down yesterday. It was a it was a real poor effort. You know, uh, I'm sure that they won't play like that again. But as Chuck just so so much pointed out, you know, we were exposed yesterday. We were exposed badly. Mark, you've been saying all year that. Uh 
Tennessee. The, the other teams, if they're going to attack Tennessee, attack them with that kind of a zone, uh, force them to shoot and expose them a little bit. They did yesterday. Do you think that's what you're going to see more of down the stretch, and what will Tennessee do if that is the case? I definitely think so. And, and Ole Miss, uh, you remember two years ago in SEC tournament, you know, we lost in the SEC tournament because of that zone. And that they're going to play some zone Wednesday night. Um, you know, after the game, I was, you know, no need to be jumping off a cliff. We lose to a really good Florida team, really talented at their place. Um, but there was some telling things. You know, our ball screen defense, you know, Florida, that's what they do. And we kept letting them get middle, uh, attacking their zone, their matchup zone. Uh, we just didn't seem to have the answer for that. Um, our bench play didn't step up. You know, our starter guards, you know, between Antonio and Josh, and then we talked about Jordan's missed shots. Um, guys just didn't step up, and also has a lot to do with Florida. Uh, it, you, coach has probably been in a lot of those cir or circumstances where sometimes the team just gets rolling. We weren't playing well, and it was we were doing. I mean, we were only down seven and a half, as bad as we were playing. And all of a sudden, Florida just got it clicking a little bit, and we didn't have an answer for them. Uh, but there's definitely some things we got to change moving forward because, like they talked about, there's a blueprint out there now uh, with zone and pressure and speeding us up and not guarding Antonio and Josh, making them beat us, make them beat us from perimeter. So we're going to see a lot of that going forward. And, and Tennessee's three primary guards were two out of 29 from the field. And Tennessee was, what, one out of 19 from three-point range? Just an awful shooting day. Jarnell Stokes had an interesting comment after the game yesterday. I want to put this up and let folks read it here. Uh, I tell the guys all the time, if they're going to trap us and force us and speed us up, we have to make them pay and push the ball up in transition. I've been begging guys to push it in transition and make guys pay for double teaming us. We slowed the ball down and played into their hands. Playing with a 15 or 20 second shot clock isn't good for us. Mark, your thoughts on the comment. Well, first, uh, it's interesting to me because I think we've all been talking about how this team could be much better out in space and attacking and, and, uh, and not just allowing defenses to get set. The other side of that coin with me is, um, you know, hear Coach Martin all the time, 90% of the time, throw the ball inside, pound the ball inside, pound the ball inside. Well, if you're Jarnell, if all of a sudden we're going up and down and now that's more opportunity for Antonio and Josh and Jordan to score in, in tempo, he's not going to get as much touches. He's not going to be as happy. And going up tempo also takes away some offensive rebounding opportunities. So there's some division there of why that comment. Uh, I think it was something he's talking about. We couldn't solve their pressure. It wasn't right. very good. We just we had no um, no philosophy to attack it. Yeah. And it was it really was yeah. a detriment to our half court that, offense. That's what was really unfortunate, as I pointed out earlier. You know, we put the ball into trapping situations. We picked the ball mm -hmm. up. We turned our back. You know, Tennessee's guards really. First and foremost, they're catch and shoot guards. They can really, uh, against some teams like when we played LSU and there wasn't any pressure at the beginning of the game, you know, we just threw the ball around the perimeter, whoever caught it shot it, and you know, that's what we do best. So we're really more of a catch and shoot type of perimeter team. And then we can drive the ball pretty well, although we sometimes have some players that get out of control too often. But we're not a team that catches the ball, you know, and just really penetrates and goes right around. In other words, we don't have a really true great point guard who can break down defenses like that and create opportunities at the other end of the floor. Yeah, and it, it is interesting. I thought yesterday was one of the, when you didn't have anybody that could create a shot for himself, it didn't look like. Yeah. That was, I don't want to beat this every week. Yeah. But Trey Golden was a guy who could at least drive the lane and get fouled. Well, at the very least, he's going to the free throw line. And he was strong. He yeah. was really a strong player. Our guards are not very strong. You know, I mean, when you look at him, you know, we got some pretty skinny guys out there that are six four and six five. You know, and Thompson's just a freshman, and he's not going to break down people because that's not his style. Yeah. You know, so you know, you all of a sudden you 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 don't break down those pressure defensive type teams like Florida and Alabama, and we're going to see it, as Mark said, from some other teams. You know, so it's, it's, it's a little bit of a problem in that sense. And, and it's, it's frustrating to me. you got to learn from your mistakes. Against Texas A&M in a key situation late in the game, you inbounded it to the right to the corner. Yeah. Right where they want you do mm -hmm. that consistently, you inbound it to the <coughs> right. They know where the ball's going. And if a team is going to press you, you have to make them pay. You, when you get it across, you have to make them pay That's for exactly pressing. Right. Yeah. Well, and, and some of that is lack of confidence because the team's going to allow you to catch the ball in the perimeter, so it's an easy spot to go catch it. Yes. Um, but the other thing about it is uh, with our guard play, you know, there's a time yesterday when, look, Florida's really good, really good teams have multiple guys that can break down a defense and get their own shot or get somebody else a shot. We have two, Jarnell because the team will double them, and then Jordan. Other than that, we don't have another guy that can go get a shot. Really good teams have more guys. 
the other side of it is yesterday we have uh, at times a lineup in there of Demontre, Armani, and Darius Thompson on the road versus Florida. That's a tough guard lineup to, to who's going to score for those guards, you know. So we need mm-hmm. these other guys, our bench. Josh and Antonio are the, are the guys that are going to allow us to make a step forward. They play well, we play, we play well, but our bench has got to bring it as well. we got to catch a break, but you, you also saw Chivas in there. Yeah. Yesterday, yeah, like, in the he, first he, time, he you haven't seen him in a long time. Yeah. Well, exactly, yeah. which is yeah. the the question then would be, why? So he gets yeah. daylight <laughs> at Florida. Yeah, that's an odd yeah. place to be getting daylight for the first time in a while. All right, <laughs> when we, I mean, I can think of easier games <laughs> yeah, really. to get in there, kid. All right, when we come back, we're going to talk about the SEC as a whole. We did this off camera last week in between segments. We were discussing what happened to the SEC in basketball. So when we come back, we're going to talk about it. why does SEC basketball stink. Come on back on the Enrichment Sports Horse.